How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. We got something something special for you today. We got Ty from Andalusia and we're talking about peat smoke. Welcome Distiller everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. I wasn't lying when I said we had something special. Uh, first of all I get to taste this again which is always a pleasure. But then we're going to steal a little bit of knowledge off Thai on, on how you guys can do it yourself. Absolutely. Yeah? Yep. Um, so, I mean, should we have a taste? Let's do it. Yeah, we get stuck in. This is great. I get to drive all around Texas and steal whiskey off people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Jesse, this is our Revenant Oak. It's our peated whiskey. We've got several whiskeys we feel that are innovative and do fun things. This is not one of those. This is really tradition. We're trying to stick uh, and honor Scotch uh, peated single malt tradition with this whiskey. I get a hint of peat mm -hmm. up at, front. And at 100 proof, um, it hides the peat a little bit. Um, you know, it's just a slightly higher proof, but um, yeah, just very, very light on the nose. And then probably, you know, you can be the judge, but light to moderate peat level overall. The yeah, flavor. there it is. There is a peat. It's got a little nice, um, a little vanilla and a little kind of creme brulee sweetness that you know you're not often getting in scotches. These uh, used bourbon barrels um, had just a little bit of that vanilla left in them, and we were able to capture some of that. I think these are going to be used Garrison Brothers barrels. Okay, right. This one. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested to see what happens with a touch of water because I'm guessing it's going to kind of jump out of the glass a little, right? Yeah, especially with the aroma. You know, like you said, you're not picking up much peat at all um, on the aroma. I don't either, um, but yeah. As, oh, yeah. as you lower the alcohol, yeah. proof is lowered. Some of those oil, uh, oil, you know, oily, rich, aromatic compounds like peat smoke are going to no longer be soluble in the alcohol, and they're going to pop out, and you'll be able to taste them and smell them. That is truly delicious. Absolutely awesome. Thank you, brother. So we want to know how to make it. Yeah. And trade Absolutely. secrets. I get it. We don't have we'll, many. We'll, we'll, we'll get what we can out of them. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, the first. The first thing that's really amazing about this is that you guys smoke your own grain. Correct. There and are some, uh, you know, distilleries outside of Scotland doing peated whiskeys. Uh, most of them are are ordering peated malt from Scotland. That's definitely nothing wrong with that. We actually some of our first batches of Revenant Oak were that exactly. But the construction of our smokehouse allowed us to get a little more versatile, and we were able to source some peat and smoke our own barley with peat. And that's just been a big win for the distillery, um, creativity-wise, giving us a lot more flexibility with types of peat, levels of peat, um, smoking duration, all those things. Yeah, to play with. And it's just a cool. It's a cool story. Yeah, and we, the we, whole place smells like peat for a few days. Yeah, yeah, this is great. You know? Yeah, you know, this is Texas. We smoke meats. Um, you know, it's funny around here. We don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables at the distillery. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of barbecue and, and bread, and and so yeah, well, so we're smoking tacos. anyway. And uh, so yeah. Uh, might as well smoke them all. The first step, is, I, I'm assuming, is sourcing the peat, right? Exactly. Um, peat's tough to find. You know, you're yeah. shipping dirt uh, across the ocean. Um, really doesn't make a lot of sense. The best source where we finally found it was kind of a retail application for people that are from Ireland and Scotland and grew up uh, burning peat in their fireplaces at home. Um, they're now shipping bricks of peat around the world for those people to burn in their fireplaces and have that smell of home. Yeah, right. And so, yeah, Amazon is where we're getting our peat. It's the best place, uh, the best, most consistent. So we'll get a box, yeah, that's maybe 20 pounds, and that'll allow us to do a whole barrel of whiskey. Is there a certain brand or...? Right now, um, you know, we're going to try as many different varieties as we can and just kind of see... Um, what we can what we can get and what we can try. There's not a lot available to us yet. Yeah. But uh, if anybody knows of any good peak sources, we're here, we're all ears. So, yeah. yeah. Like, drop some comments in the comment section down here, guys, if, if you know of anything. I'll attempt to put a link in the description, guys, for the peat. I I haven't looked into it, so I don't know how. I'll, I'll do my best. You want to describe the, the general process before yep. we get into specifics and we most get from there. Uh, peated malt um, that you get from Scotland. The peat um, is imparted into the grain as part of the, the last step of the malting process, kind of the kilning and the drying process, or, or maybe other process steps of the actual malting itself. Right. Our barley, our malted barley is already malted, um, and so we sort of kind of take a couple steps back and we will wet the grain very slightly, and that's gonna allow the grain to pick up a lot more smoke. 
Um, if we would try to just to, to smoke the dry grain, it just wouldn't be nearly as smoky. Barley does work very well because it has a rough husk to it. Right, and if you want to, surface area, yeah, right? Yeah, you want yeah. If you were to try to smoke corn, it doesn't work nearly as well. It's got a shiny surface to it, and there's just nothing really for the smoke to hold on to. And so we want kind of a rough, bumpy surface, and then we want it to be sticky. Um, and so wetting the grain gets a little bit sticky, and, and the, the smoke will actually grab onto it a lot more. Uh, we'll load the grain to, to, to shallow racks and put it into our smokehouse. And then um, smoke it for about 24 hours. With, uh, 24 with, hours, with wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we'll load small briquettes in, you know, one at a time every couple hours to keep the fire going. And then we'll load it right before we leave this evening and kind of let it go all night. Do you want to describe the, the, the design of the smokehouse a little bit? Sure. And talk yep. about why you chose that design of smokehouse. Absolutely. We have a, a separate firebox. For us, it's a stainless steel drum. We've got a little firebox kit that allows us to to have a little door um, and we can build our fire inside. And we've got a pipe that runs maybe about six feet from the firebox to the smokehouse. And that's important. We're really looking to, to cool the smoke. Right. Having the firebox next to it also ensures you're not getting any direct heat from the firebox. If the fire was below or in the smokehouse, that would be a problem. Which is cool if you're kilning. Uh, right. or, 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 or smoking meat, or, yeah, right, or yeah, if you're yeah. trying to dry in the bar yeah. or something like that, that's, that's great, not you want what, that heat. Correct. Not what you're doing. We're looking to keep the smoke temperature low. We don't want to get into higher temperatures that will degrade your enzymes. You know, this, this right. is barley that we need for making a mash later on. Yeah. Those enzymes are critical for that. And so um, if we were to hot smoke the barley, you might destroy some of those enzymes. Okay, so um, low so multi- temperature, yep. heaps of smoke, and yep. the, the offset design basically lets the, the heat dissipate out before it gets Exactly. Into the, into exactly. the smoke house. Yeah, it's probably maybe going to get up to only about 90 Fahrenheit in the smoke. You were talking to about the way you light the fire. You're using charcoal briquettes, yep. essentially. Just as a starter. Yep. We'll get it. Um, peat, you can't just put a match to peat and get it going. You kind of yep. have to throw it into a fire or, or have a, a fire on it for several minutes to get it going. So we'll get a charcoal layer down. Um, we'll let those coals get completely red and burn out any kind of flavor or aroma or anything from those. We don't want any uh, the charcoal to impart anything to the malt. Get the coals completely red and then we'll put um, the uh, peat on top, kind of let that go ahead and catch fire for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, then go ahead and shut up the smokehouse and start collecting the smoke and, and uh, smoking that barley. I watched you load the trays and you, you mentioned that having a thick layer of barley is, mm-hmm. is not really helping anything, right? Right. It's not, even though with the, the trays have screen bottoms, um, we were hoping to maybe, you know, see if we can get a lot of smoke flowing through the grain. It, that just really doesn't happen. It's right. really just smoking the exterior surface of anything that it touches. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is we'll load the, the screens, um, spread it out, and then kind of give it a little bit of a hilly form to it so that it has a little more surface area right before we wet the grain. Yeah, cool. Okay. And is there anything specific with the design of the trays themselves? Like, do you think that having the mesh bottom is really doing anything? Perhaps, you know, we might be getting a little bit of smoke um, exposure on the bottom layer right. of the grain. Yeah, that's yeah. our help. Um, but, but if you wanted to do it at home and you use an oven tray or something, you don't You could probably be... use a cookie sheet. And yeah. As long as you're in an environment that's fully inundated with smoke. You know, right. our smokehouse, you can't see, your visibility is six inches in there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's not going to be too much of a problem getting exposure. And yeah. so most people at home can, you know, you, you know if you're willing to, do it in, a, in an oven, or if it's a little smoky, or if you can do it in some kind of smoker outside. Um, yeah, having just um, a little bit of smoke exposure over it, um, you know, just constantly is all you need. So. And and on that note, you said you sort of you spread the grain out in a way that has peaks and valleys that Correct. increases the surface area of the I want to say water line, but the grain line, yeah. you know, the, the top of the grain. Just, just more to... grain touching smoke is what we're trying to get yeah Yeah, and so little peaks and valleys and spreading it out in a a really hilly way kind of helps as well so once you've smoked the grain is there any specific way that you're using it in in your mashes like ratios or absolutely yeah we do a pretty heavily smoked malt we don't have a you know a ppm or a phenol reading like which we did um and uh, for our peated malt but um i believe it's way smokier than any of the commercial malt so our mash bill is pretty low Right. You know, without giving out exact numbers, it's it's probably less than ten percent. Oh wow! Our total okay. Malt, yeah. Our total mash bill is our smoked uh, malt. Now, um, our whiskeys are smoky. They're not Ardbeg Lafroig smoky, um, no. but the peat is definitely there. Oh, it's present. And yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with our still. Um, I've, I've tasted whiskeys from other distilleries that are a much higher peated malt content. 
and the final whiskey is not that smoky because there's some kind of column or something like that that the vapors are traveling right. through. We have a very, very basic pot still um, with just hardly even an onion on top. I think that's capturing all those rich oils in the smoke better than, than even if you had a column that was completely open or something like that, you would still get the reflux and the rectification. That so, probably so eliminate the natural that, yeah. reflux. We get, uh, we've got to do at least two distillations and some of our products are three distillations to, um, you know, to be, to be drinkable at all. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, single pass is not an option for us at all. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> because you're in Texas and because things mature so freaking quickly with the heat and the temperature swings, these guys are making really tight cuts, even yep. for smoky new make. And it is, it, it it does blow my mind that you're getting this much smoke yeah. in such a pretty whiskey. Knowing that our whiskeys aren't going to be put back for seven years, we're doing yeah. very tight cuts. You know, yeah. right now the goal is for everything to be a minimum of two. Um, you know, hopefully we can get up to three perhaps, but I don't think we'll ever get more than three or four years, especially on our new barrel whiskeys. Those are going to be just too, too tannic and oaky yeah. after three or four years in the Texas summers. You'd have to do something crazy like build it like dig a cellar or get a hundred gallon barrel or yeah, like yeah yeah like a vat <laughs> yeah it's not bad yeah big foodie or fooder yeah, 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 yeah 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 you have it sitting right in the corner there mm -hmm. <laughs> so when i get back to new zealand it's actually been really hard for us to buy commercial smokers in new zealand mm. it's only just starting to take off and just like the smoke meat phenomenon oh yeah or, yeah okay yeah yeah like an offset smoker <laughs> really good luck dude wow, wow. I, I saw a traeger grill at a local hardware store for the first time about two months ago. Yeah. I think they've been around a bit longer. The pellet grill, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was pretty tricky. They're supposed to be neat things, yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I'm thinking of doing when I get, in, when I get home is uh, instead of spending, it's almost two grand for a Traeger in New Zealand, it's crazy, uh, is getting uh, one of those little chest gas powered smokers. Mm -hmm. You know the ones I mean, right? Yep. Do, do you have any suggestions on anything I could do to take the process I've seen today and, and apply it to that? Kind yeah. of machinery. Yeah, absolutely. I know as long as you get good quality chips or chunks. I find right. some, you know, the smaller the chip, the drier and kind of the more aged it's going to be. I find chunks are definitely going to be a little bit better if you can if you can have a smoker that can handle a larger size chunk. You know, that would be better. Um, but if you're but if you're limited to chips, that's no problem at all. Um, you know, most of those smokers are just going to have a little tray. You'll wet your chips usually ahead of time, so they'll do a nice slow smolder. But yeah, there's no reason why you can't make that exact process of what we did in a, in a small home smoker. Okay, cool. The the one issue I see with that is because it's the, the gas is inside the smoker to make the, the yep. wood smoke. I'm gonna have problems with temperature control, aren't you I? You would, and um, you know, if you did go electric, that would be a good option right. for smoking mold. I think a better option because then you can keep those lower temperatures. Now, um, I've tried some things with mine at home. You do have to reach a minimum temperature with those just to get the wood to start smoking and burning. Of course. And yeah. that's often going to be higher than maybe what you want your barley to be. Okay, cool. So, you know, just keep a, keep a good eye on the temperature. And if you can keep it under 140, that's a good thing. Okay. Um, you know, temp enzymes start to be active in the 140s to 150s, and so we don't want to start to activate the, maybe even a little cooler perhaps. But uh, If we can get it super smoky and we can get it down to you know, like you say, less than 10% of the grist, I, I mean, what's the problem, right? Destroying our enzymes wouldn't be a problem. Because we've got the other 90% of the grist Excellent that's gonna do the heavy lifting. Yeah. Excellent point. Uh, the other thing that I do have is a smoke generator. So I'm mm. thinking of putting a hole inside of the, the little cabinet. Like a smoke gun type thing. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. yeah so that'll work. That would work? Yeah, absolutely, man. Awesome. Just make sure you're good quality input ingredients, as Whatever always, and got. that includes the wood. Yeah. You know, sometimes if you're in Places where the wood is very exotic, it's hard to get. You're, right. you're, you're mailing from Amazon or eBay or something, and, and your 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 quality might be questionable, or the age or something like that. So that's tough. But yeah, like I say, the larger and fresher the chunk. Obviously, you don't want wet wood. Yeah, right, but right, right. Um, it needs to be seasoned and dried. But yeah, good quality chips, and you should be you should be good to go. I want to run this little guy past you. Let's do it. This is a smoked whiskey, and I will tell you right now, it's it's pretty young. It's only I think eight months old, okay. and that's eight months in New Zealand which is much more like Scotland. Okay. So it's definitely young. I see. Yeah. Uh, but this is smoked with Manuka wood, which is uh, a native wood in New Zealand. And this is kind of the go-to for New Zealanders, especially for smoking fish. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wow. Beautiful, yeah. I've had a lot of Texans tell me that uh, Manuka is kind of similar to mesquite. I'm getting that right away. Almost even a hickory, a very spiciness that yeah. uh, you don't get. 
it, it, it's spicy, but on the herbal side, it's a, it's a tough one to describe. I mean, we were talking before, how do you describe any smoke flavor if you don't just get to taste it? Until you start playing with a lot of woods yeah. and doing a lot of side by side, it's very hard because you'll taste barbecue one one way and then try to like, a few weeks later and try to compare those experiences. And that's tough. Yeah. You got to sit down with, you know, several spirits with different woods and boy, that is beautiful. Uh, this is 100% smoked grain. The, the, the grist is yeah, just yeah. smoke. Yeah, it's heavily smoked. Um, so I do think I'm going to keep this, age it, and then potentially blend it back with just like a single malt, Brilliant. essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, what do you think, man? And, and I, I didn't tell him before, but What's the proof? I'm not precious on this stuff, so you can... Uh, uh, 60%. Okay. 120. So wow, it's just going to explode here, isn't it? I'm sorry. So our discussion about the, the Maui wood this is some New Zealand wood. Okay, see this? And it's 100%. It's a bomb, man. It's good. Moose is going to love this too. <laughs> what is the wood? This, right? uh, manuka. It's, a, it's kind of like tea tree. So yeah, it's, they were saying, it's and I sort of agree, it's kind it's of mesquite, hickory almost. It's got a phenolic bite to it, like a, like a peat almost, uh, that finished. Kind of like a band-aid-y uh, plasters, more, you call yeah, them, right? More of, a, more of that than like the hardwoods we use. Mm -hmm. This is this is a hundred percent though, but it is they call it lightly smoked. It's a commercial product. Okay. But so, so I thought screw it. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's the first time I used it. I thought screw it rather than pissing around. Okay. I, I just do it full on and then I can blend it back if I. That's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea with this stuff, guys, is that uh, we're aging it pretty similar to a Scotch. So it's a secondhand uh, bourbon oak. Oh, we're gonna hit, we're gonna play some games. Irish. Half and half or? Well, do you want to do like half the amount that you did and yeah. then we can play tradesies? And I, th I think now that Ty's added some of this in, it's going to add the, the wood, like, like more maturity to it, which mm -hmm. is what, what my spirits really are lacking. Yeah, so it's still dominant, but then it has, you know, a little bit more rump to it. Um, the, you know, little, yeah, the backbone, the, the, the sweet. The sweet, the barrel. The baseline. Mm -hmm. mm. And then kind of tamed the smoke a little bit, but it's still ever present. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. All right, well, thanks a bunch for watching, guys, and definitely thank you, Ty. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's man, my pleasure. If you guys get to come here, uh, you 100% should. These guys are on the Whiskey Trail. So if you come to Texas, sign up, come and see these guys, and uh, they'll get a tour, right? Come on up to the farm, yeah. All right, team, so you know the drill. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out in 2019. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button down below. I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.